many different materials is because my background is in interior design. So as I'm a designer, you know, you're using different elements and materials to create like a cohesive work. So I sort of bring that into my artwork. Um, my favorite materials are, I do a lot of magazine clippings just for the graphics and the color. I, I kind of keep like stacks of images all over the house and then I pull from those. I use a lot of tiles um, just because they're kind of easy, cool things to incorporate, colorful and small. And then I really like doing a lot of metals, you know, just to get that like shiny, I mean, I kind of like a range of materials because I'll use even like plant-based objects and things like that. So anything that attracts visual interest and, you know, kind of a combination of layers. I think that most art is inspired by life events to some degree. Like, I have a crush on skater boys, they're skater and surfer boys, they're sort of my kryptonite. So I like doing skate pieces. I grew up with boys, you know, skateboarding and all that. And then um, some other stuff, like I do a lot of yoga. So, you know, like this piece, it's kind of like very yoga-ish. So, you know, yeah, there's little pieces to everything. Yeah, I, I use a lot of acrylic, uh, house paint, but uh, the thing that I stressed in most of the paintings and the mentorship was using different colors to, uh, to express a certain emotion that you're feeling or different imagery that you want to portray. Uh, the mentorship program I was involved in, it's uh, through the Young Artist Group, it's through City Arts Factory, and uh, a lady named Meredith puts it on, and she organizes it and uh, puts out the word, gets different local artists every month to mentor uh, a group of kids, younger, it's usually uh, between teenagers to 21 years old, and uh, the artist teaches them their technique, and then they try the different process or a different technique, different uh, skill set that uh, that artist provides. There's a lot of up and coming artists. Um, I actually uh, founded a collective of artists, younger artists, called Overlooked Youth Collective. And we basically are a central hub for other younger artists that don't have the tools or the exposure or the tools to get the exposure as artists, but they still have the skill sets. So we put on different artists and we promote different artists that we feel um, have the talent. Alright, I'm, uh, I'm the glass man. Usually I work on glass, but um, today I'm mixing it up. Everything today is recycled. It's all made out of uh, my empty spray paint cans. Oh, basically this is my childhood. This is when I, when I think of video games, this is the video games I played. So uh, when I go back to what my joy is, um, it's all this stuff. It's, it's, it's all 8-bit, 16-bit, old school. This is just me having fun. This is, I, I've done high concept shows, I've done things with themes. This is just me saying, hey, I like this. I'm gonna make another one, and another one, and another one. Next thing I know, I got 30 pieces. I, I'm a free guy, I like, to, I like to recycle stuff. So everything on the wall behind me is all recycled. Um, I, I like to use every part of everything I can think of. So, um, so I'm kind of a recycling artist. So the work that I do is I do, I do a multiple things. Uh, I do a bit of digital graphics, and then I do photography, and I do mixed media. Um, with my current series that I'm working on, it's uh, a mix of like gel transfers and uh, uh, spray paint and acrylics and like some ink pens in there, all thrown together to kind of like create this experience in a, in, a, in a piece. It's an experience. Like everything is meant to say something about an experience that I ever had or I've seen from a point of view that's like I'm just sitting and drinking and watching as like you normally do downtown. <laughs> a lot of my pieces would kind of be based off of experiences, like certain people I've met, certain things that have happened, um, a lot of things that's, that's kind of like built up in my mind from like the past that I'm kind of like figuring out how to translate into a piece of art, that's that. Um, and then a lot of times it's something like repetition. I mean, as an artist, you gotta kind of, kind of sometimes have to repeat yourself, so that way you can get the recognition that you want in the world. So sometimes that's where a lot of my certain symbols and certain shapes come into place. Uh, a lot of my pieces invoke emotion. They're all meant to invoke emotion on purpose. Um, it's, most, it's the idea of concept of art. It me it's meant to trigger your mind to think about something more. Um, so a lot of these pieces that you see here are native. It's part of a native series. That's uh, a series that I've evolved in the past year, a couple years, that I've done gas masks, which is like you protect what you want in and out your life. When you feel comfortable, you take off your mask and you get to share this energy with your, your friends, your family, whatever this, this thing in front of you is. 
um, that you're connecting with. And then you become native, which is a raw essence of who you are. So his work is pretty much crayon sculptures. Um, he takes your basic crayon and sculpts popular pop icons out of them. Anywhere from, as you can see, Star Wars items, um, horror movies, we have Gizmo, Futurama, a little bit of everything. And it, all it is is that he uses uh, dental instruments to make the sculptures. And any crayon that you see different colors in, it's all just melted wax from other crayons. So none of it is actually uh, painted on or anything like that. It's all pure crayon. He was actually in the school to be a dentist, and he was in there about three years already. And then he realized, I don't really want to be a dentist anymore. Uh, and then once he left school, he started, he had the dental tools, and he was always into art and stuff. And then he started playing with the crown idea, and then just pretty much took off. I mean, if you've seen his stuff, you've probably seen it also online. It's been featured all over the place. It's gone pretty viral, too. Yeah, he's actually a pretty timid guy. Uh, I wish we could have brought him out here for this film, but I'm glad that we were able to get his work here. Um, as you can see, he does a good job of bringing nostalgia into his work. Any inner child that you have is going to come out in this show for sure. Um, because we got, we got crayons from Batman, superhero, minions, Star Wars. Um, so it's a pretty geek fandom over here. So, I mean, if you come to the show, you're going to see some great stuff. The work for this show is an ode to Odolin, uh, an artist from the 1700s, and uh, I love his work, and so I picked out some of my favorite pieces and emulated them in my own way. Okay, so the mediums I use for this, and also my favorite mediums, is to start off with acrylic. I like to do a lot of textural work, and then I finish it off with oil. I moved here in 1993-94. I think 94 was my first art show here and it was in Winter Park. There wasn't a lot of an art scene, and in the last 20 years, it has grown immensely. I would say even 10 years ago to now, in the last three years, it's been amazing. So all I can see is better things for the artists in Orlando. I think that there's a lot of art here. There's a lot of like young creativity and people like that are very much purveyors of you know, just creating art and making things happen, and I think that's really great because I think it's very accessible to people that want to be involved. I see the B-Side show as showing everyone in Orlando what Orlando art can be. Because you look around and it doesn't have to be safe, it doesn't have to be homogenized, it can be out there in your face and we don't have to imitate anyone else, we can just be ourselves and we're strong.